Welcome back to Tools and Track and this world of utter desperation. Yep, I have not got a singing career ahead of me, but what we do have potentially ahead of me this year is a chance to get the low cost out for a shakedown. Now, last time we went to Forestburn, the episode was, Christ, many, many moons ago, I was at track and had a discussion with the auto test boffins and it does appear that there is a chance that this car without an IVA or any form of MOT could go on track and have that shakedown and let's be honest potentially be competitive all I need to do is make sure we get through the basic scrutineering that is ball ticklingly tempting and it made me walk away and have a think what is the bare minimum I need in order to put this car out on track? Now, I'll stop you right there. Yes, we're going to go in through IVA and we're going to try and complete it and that will be a process, but Christ, we are at like 75 episodes of just build. Wouldn't it be good before we get to 100 to actually test this and see if it all bloody works? I would think so. So that's going to be the latest target. Operation final build starts now. That looks like a long list, but like all good lists, start at the top and just keep ticking. All the same, it wouldn't hurt to give you a quick rundown on what I'm thinking though. Diff mount plates, that's gonna be the topic of today's episode along with obviously finishing the back end. I'll get into that in just a moment. But other things that we'll need to make this thing run in the basic term is gonna be brakes. Well, that's actually very close to being finished. We might actually get around to that today as well. Headlights, I put this on it doesn't need headlights, but it's going to look bloody strange without them. Also, there's a couple of easy ones that I want to finish and naturally building the front end up. Well, you'd want the headlights on, wouldn't you? So we'll get to that. Anyway, exhaust. <laughs> we'll get to that one later. Later will come soon. I need to figure out a solution to get this out the side of the car and finish it. Center console. Well, I can't have a prop just spinning next to my elbow. We'll need to sort of cap that off and I don't want it to just look crap, so that needs some thought. Scuttle and a dash. Yes, so the scuttle we have got to a point where it can mount, but there needs to be a dash. I've got to at least know what the RPM is of the engine. Actually, to be honest, I probably don't need to know any of that, but oil pressure as a minimum is a good thing. So that battery, yes, must do battery. It is A, needed, otherwise the engine won't start, but B, it also will need to be properly secured. That's a proper scrutineering point for auto test, so we need to pay attention to this. The loom, I put this in, we've done the loom. We just need to run it to make the engine work. What about all the lights and all the other stuff? Not needed, but I do need to get that in its final position just for the engine side. We'll figure out the rest of the electrics later. Fuel tank, a big thing. We'll deal with it, don't worry, and we'll get to it, but the car won't run without fuel. Lastly, the radiator and the bodywork, that's all done, we just need to bolt it on. That'll be a wee addendum to an episode. Seats and harnesses, believe it or not, again, much like these two, they're done, we just need to plug them in. Then last of all, drive it. Right, at the end of the last episode, we did say we'd put this in loosely, so uh, <laughs> yeah. There's always more things with me, isn't there? So the diff mount is sat in the top. There's a bolt that runs through it. And many, many moons ago, we made this wee sort of black plate that was kind of a tester that would hold the bottom of the bush. But the problem with this is, it's unsupported. I don't know if there's a better way that we can make this plate. And I've not done one for the other side for that exact reason. If this doesn't work, why make two of them? Also, you'll notice the handbrake cables flopping around with nothing really holding them up. Well, they actually sit exactly where the diff mount plates need to be. Obviously, I'm going to try and combine the two of those. Lastly, if we can add some strength to these diff mount plates, i.e. with some form of triangulation to somewhere, it's going to be a good idea, isn't it? So let's see if we can add strength, get these in properly, not foul things that I haven't plugged in yet, i.e. drive shafts, in fact, We'll deal with the drive shafts first, won't we? And then that should hopefully finalise this thing up. And then we can move on to finishing the brakes. Exciting times!
probably engineer a cup holder into this wasted space for future. <laughs> like, uh, like I need to think about that right now. Anyway, diff plates. What do I mean by diff plates? Those who know MX5s and are familiar with this ridiculous design of diff will know that to secure them, he bolt them from underneath through the two turrets that live on the outsides. And this thing is the big washer, more or less, that holds it in place. You've got two retaining screws that holds it orientated. I'm pretty sure these do absolutely nothing to actually stop torque loading, but you never know. Anyway, that's what it looks like. Normally they are turned into dust by the time you remove the diff. They have got questionable use. I don't really see the point, but crucially, crucially, they must do something. And my principal idea is they'll hold the bush itself in place, especially when you're running polyurethanes. So step one, we had to put something in that would ensure that the load is spread across the whole polyurethane bush. Now, we've done that by the plate, as you can see down here. This guy spreads across, catches all the polyurethane bush and does a lovely good job of it. However, we don't try that in. Remember, two wee bolts stop the lateral movement and there probably will be an amount of lateral movement. The vast majority of that though will be captured by that snout mount that we put on. Remember, at the front we've got the deleting of the PPF and therefore another mount there. But I still feel like we can add a wee bit more strength. The reason being, all of this space frame at the back is still not exactly what they designed in the book. So, I don't know. I think it might be worth putting a bit more weight in. And that is why we designed this to be a semicircle and not a full circle. I've left a straight edge here because my idea, which may or may not be of any use, is to do the following. If we turn this guy around so that the two flat edges sit here, and then we take into consideration all the things that we've added, such as drive shafts, the fuel tank will actually kind of sheet off here and shouldn't really get in the way too much. That leaves us with one direct route from here to triangulation. Here. So I think what we'll do is we'll put some form of structure that will go from here out the way. As you can tell, handbrake cables are going to be in this chat as well in a moment. So... Uh, Structure that will go from here, past this that won't live there, and tie into here. But, bearing in mind, I want this to be easily removable, should the need arise. So it's not going to platform onto the top, it's going to platform onto the bottom. So the whole assembly can go on through that bolt and through the bottom in one movement. Sounds complicated? Yes, because as usual I have over explained a very, very simple thing. Let me make one and I'll show you to the time lapse.
right, so that's that back end bit dealt with. Now we're gonna take a quick interlude because it's time to think about the wheels. Obviously, operation, make the car run. The wheels don't hold air because they are massively, massively lacquer peel corroded and terrible. So I'm gonna whip them all off, get them stripped and get them ready to go. So, interesting point about these wheels, these are obviously genuine Japanese wheels, which is a thing, uh, but they also have very odd style valves. So, these are, these screw in, which, so like a normal valve, just to be clear, pops in like that, so you get the wee pull in, pop in, and that wee rubber thing seals it. These guys don't. And since I actually had these wheels myself many, many moons ago on a Suzuki Alto, uh, and then my brother had them for a while and then I procured them back after he removed them from his Suzuki Cappuccino. Nice. So these are now going to go on because they're 4 by 100 But the, the valve situation is a weird one. I don't trust these valves. I think in their current format they're letting air out. One of them definitely is because one of the tyres was full of that horrible tyre weld nonsense. It's Thanks. not. It's not ideal. <laughs> it was like, look at it. It's all, literally all it's over everywhere. the time. It was like a liter of it just lying there, pulled in the wheel. Um, so I think one of them has been failing. But I just want to take this guy out and see if we can actually put a normal valve in. Everyone has stated mm, we can't. It doesn't look hopeful. No, I'm not. I'm not getting my hopes up either. They look. But they they look very small. Obviously, only recently have I had the capabilities of dealing with tires myself. Up until now, I've been at the mercy of other people telling me what these are about. But now, we can actually prove it. I, look, I can imagine this is just a silhouette of me at this angle, but... It's not, actually, it's quite good. It's quite good. Is this, is this going to be usable with a normal valve? I'm going to say no. I think we're all going to say no. Why use such strange valves, though? It's like... I think it's... These are odd wheels. These, these wheels actually are made by Bridgestone. Yeah, there's no chance. <laughs> tiny, man. Look at the size of that hole. There is no chance. So for reference, no. that's just normal valve. Yeah, like I don't even think the valve will fit. The valve won't even fit through the hole. Yeah, right. okay, so that's a problem. That's a no-go. Well, look at it. <sighs> yeah, that's dead as well. I look wonder why how, these leak. Look how thin that is. It's a bit so you're gonna have to try and find. Where are you gonna find some of these? Do you know where we're gonna find these? AliExpress. You might actually. You might. That yeah, is, you that's might. That's hundred percent an AliExpress job, isn't it? If you don't change tires sooner or later, your valves will be the reason why you're losing air. So this is no different. You'd never reuse these guys. The problem is, I now need to find whatever that is and get new ones. To anyway. be fair though, they don't actually look that bad on the inside. No, uh, don't get me wrong, the, the lacquer peel is... Yeah, it's very... It, it's, I say lacquer, I keep calling this lacquer peel, like entire powder coat yeah, failure yeah. Is, is exquisite on the outside. It uh, is like complete coating failure. You can it's actually just... see that the whole wheel has under it's got corrosion underneath these spokes. i would be interested to see actually if these can even be saved. They uh, will, they will come up fine. Well, we'll see. Fine. They're also not going to be the same colour. Phase two of the big colour reveal coming Ooh. soon, coming shortly. But uh, yeah, right, let's get these away for a refurb. When was your last, oh, for f**k's sake moment? I've just had my most recent, and in the spirit of tools and track, I'm going to share it with you. You'll remember we hydroblasted, painted, and got this inlet manifold looking very nice. However, I've been fighting now for a while to get the fuel rail to go on, or if I'm being honest, to get the manifold to go on, because it seemed to be knocking into the fuel rail. Now, my first thought with this was the return line that we plumbed in many, many moons ago might be catching, but it's not. It was actually catching the line. It's just hitting the fuel rail, and I couldn't work out why. 
Uh, I've tried everything, moving things around, buggering with stuff, couldn't get it to fit. So then I had to take a step back and go, right, how have I humped this? Because it's clearly me that's humped this. And this is a good one. Because whilst I was assembling all of the vacuum gubbins for this, I took a wee cheat route and used the spare VVT lump over there. Uh, except I didn't, because even that VVT didn't match this VVT, because this VVT, or this manifold, has these mad swirl pot flaps that open and close, and that one doesn't. And I thought, Christ, they even made changes to the VVT lineup. That's a bit wild. No, they didn't, because that manifold doesn't match this manifold for a very good reason. Because it's not that manifold, which is the manifold that came off of that bloody engine. I've picked this manifold up because it's been lying next to the car that this came out of my MX-5, the 99-2000. There's absolutely no benefit to keeping this in the car because it's got swirl pots, not compatible with boost. Also, don't have the fuel rail anymore because that had to be retained for the MX-5 on the throttle bodies so this won't fit. And basically, the sum of all this, I have just spent a lot of time and a bit of money making this manifold look nice for nothing. Work tidy, work smarter. It's amazing how all of a sudden I'm really into patina. But yeah, it's going to go on and it'll work so we can come back to making this look pretty. I'm on a deadline now. The reason this is going on in a hurry is because we have clutch, we have throttle. Let's hit the pedal trifecta and have brakes. Right, that seems like a lot of work to tick just one thing off the list, but naturally we have many things that have maybe not considered for the list that are just part of the process. So by the next episode, I'm hoping the wheels will be back. That's just a thing that will happen. We don't really need to consider now. Uh, that'll need tires as well. Hmm. Maybe we should be considering it. Anyway, don't, not to worry. I can't really not put wheels on it. It's not something I'm going to forget. So. Next up, we're going to look at brakes, but that's going to be in the next episode. Uh, we're going to try and tick off a lot of easy wins in this as well over the next coming weeks. The idea here, as you can probably tell, is to have this thing on track before we hit 100 episodes. As you can tell, we're on episode 73 or something now, so that is, if we do it the worst, an episode per item, still an achievable target. So by 100, we will see this thing on track, which hopefully should be this year. Running up the side of the screen now, you will see Patreons. That is patreon.com slash tools and track. Awesome people that support this build, support the whole channel if I'm being honest. So if you fancy having a bit of uh, thumbs up help and supporting in that way, patreon.com slash tools and track, it would be greatly appreciated. If not, yes, cool, I understand. Do have a wee share of this, you know, chuck it in your own social media because uh, it helps. We have been doing this for six years now and uh, 5,000 subs is pretty meagre, you know, it'd be helpful if your pals came along and hit the subscribe button and help the channel growth, that's the sort of things that YouTube appreciates. As you can probably tell, it's not given me much in the way of analytics and putting my stuff to the top of the list because I have turned off ads on all of my episodes because I hate it, you hate it, and I just don't feel the need to watch other people's stuff and go, oh Christ, there's ads, and then put ads on myself. It's a bit crap, so I'm totally funded by Patreon. So, enough end of episode babble. Lots of good exciting things to come. Until next weekend, guys, drive safe. Watch your feet. The stuff falling off. That's I don't know why we came this way. I'll bring a wheel over. I know, why? I'm going to bring it over and put it here, because that's oh, what we just did. Great. Shut up! You're going to bring them over here? I'm going to bring a wheel over. Okay, bring a wheel over. Over here. Here's Craig. Say, say stuff yeah. on camera. Yeah, it's over. Have I got any silver? All oh, right, not like cross your palm with silver. Oh, you're filming, huh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's that. I don't know why you say it's free. Uh, inside the low cost. But you will just kind of. Passenger foot, well, the low cost, there's random rando tins there or under the drill. I'll, I'll get some, I'll, I'll get some. Yeah, yeah, I know you will. Yeah.